This is season three of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's regular podcast where the team roping world talks. We've told the stories of some of the greatest cowboys, horses, and moments in the sport, and we're so far from done. In 2020, we'll bring you more of what you've come to expect, like interviews with the best cowboys and cowgirls we know, and we'll dive even deeper into subjects you care about. Look for more audio editions of the Team Roping Journal stories you might have missed in print, and learn about the great horses shaping the sport and great challenges facing our industry. All this and more in 2020. I'm Chelsea Schaefer. Hey everybody, welcome to The Score. This is Chelsea Schaefer. I want to take this episode to change pace just a bit. This week's show is an audio edition of The Rundown with Dakota Kirkenschlager. It's a feature that one of our contributors, Bonnie Wheatley, wrote earlier this year. Dakota, who is a freakishly talented healer, originally from Colorado, but it was long since called Texas home, he stepped away from an illustrious rodeo career to train horses, and this story is about that choice and the new direction of Dakota's life. Bonnie first texted me about this story while she sat and watched a rain cow horse show in Fort Worth and noticed the announcer called Dakota's name during the raining. I'd heard Cesar de la Cruz and my friends at the Myers Ranch talk about how Dakota was taking his horsemanship to new heights, trading in the sail barn stock he'd ridden in his youth for the refined, well-bred show horses he was now aboard. This story takes you through Dakota's transformation, the people who've helped shape his story, and the program he uses now to create some of the finest rope horses in the business. I hope you all enjoy this episode of The Score. This is The Rundown with Dakota Kirkenschlager. Rodeo fans are accustomed to seeing three-time National Finals Rodeo qualifier Dakota Kirkenschlager riding the perfect position to execute a masterful heel shot with uncanny ease. What's less expected, at least until fairly recently, is seeing the Whitesboro, Texas rope horse trainer changing leads and running down to sliding stops and fast spins, yes, different spins, in National Rain Cow Horse Association sanctioned competitions. But this fall, you may very well catch him entered up in the American Rope Horse Association World Championships held in conjunction with the Snaffle Bit Futurity as well as the Futurity and Horse Show itself. Our rope horses have to run, they have to stop, and they have to cow, he said. It's actually a lot like what you need to do if you're looking for a snaffle bitter. I like the crossover because the rain cow horses, they've been hauled, they've been prepared to show, they are very broke, and that's exactly how we need them to be as rope horses. When you look at the top level cow horse deal, those horses are really broke. We need all that, too. Kirkenschlager earned big time recognition early in his roping career as the 2011 Resist All Rookie of the Year in the Healing. The phenom quickly ascended the elite ranks to make his first appearance at the NFR at age 21 in 2012. He returned to Vegas in 2014 and 2016 and has won the most coveted titles in the business, among them the Cheyenne Frontier Days in 2016 healing for Tyler Wade, the first two rounds of the 2014 NFR behind Turtle Pal, Guyman, Odessa, Pecos, the list goes on. But after finishing 50th in the 2017 healing standings, Kirkenschlager's competitive focus shifted. With the rope horse market strong and Futurities being a great atmosphere for exposing young horses to competition, Kirkenschlager has found his niche in training more than traveling to rodeos. His training philosophy relies on lessons learned from reiners, reined cow horse trainers, and ropers alike, and he stresses the importance of keeping horses responsive and liking their job. I see a lot of people who never do get a horse soft. They only rope on them, he said. A horse is not going to put out 110% if you just rope and don't put in the time of keeping them together, keeping them relaxed. Avoiding burnout is a big deal in Kirkenschlager's training routine, and particularly important to longevity of rope horses that will hopefully have many competitive years beyond their futurity season ahead of them. They get burnout just like a person. If you take your kid to basketball and they come home and say, my coach yelled at me the whole time, I don't really care if I go back. It's the same with horses, he said. They've got to like what they do. You can't mash it out of them every day. It takes a lot of time. The set of horses I've got right now, I've had for several months, and they've got a good rhythm to where the expectations are simple to understand. A lot of the horses in his program are five and six-year-olds that have previously been reined on, so Kirkenschlager introduces them to tracking and raiding cattle gradually. We'll work a cow on them when we get them, and by exposing them to that then, when we start roping on them, they guide easier because they've learned to correlate when you position them to their position on a cow. In certain cases, crossover between events makes good sense to Kirkenschlager's program. Taking a snaffle bitter or derby horse, for instance, and transitioning it into the roping pen is one such scenario. 
If they're broke enough to do a respectable reining pattern and broke enough to take a cow down the fence respectably, I feel the roping should come pretty easy for most of them. It makes for a natural crossover, he said. While his rope horses are expected to track cattle and drag their butts, it's obviously not to the extent of what is demanded in a reining pattern. We'll run and stop one, but not necessarily fence them like a rainer would, he said. The end goal for what we're doing is for them to run hard, raid a cow, and stop hard. So if we've asked them to stop big a few times and got them soft, ours are pretty good that when we back into the box and go rope on one, that should be pretty easy for them to navigate. To keep his horses liking their jobs, Kirkenschlager's goal is simplicity in his training routine. Sometimes we just lope long, straight lines back and forth down the arena, kind of like if you were a rainer fencing one. But we don't stop them much, he said. I think things need to stay simple and relaxed. Kirkenschlager aims to structure his work week by accomplishing various objectives for the horses each day. Mondays we spend just getting the horses out and trotting them, he said. We'll trot and lope them with no tie-down. Just get them soft in the face with a ring bit or not a lot of bit on them. Just get them out, breaking them at the pole, getting them supple and responsive, just keeping things relaxed. Tuesday's routine closely resembles what he does on Mondays, but Kirkenschlager says he likes to add in some breakaway roping or tracking a really slow steer to work on fundamentals at an easy pace. The goal with that is keeping them soft and moving off my hands and my legs, he added. Wednesdays, I rope, but what I think about is, at these rope horse faturities, you've got to make three or four solid runs. So if I can make a habit of making four nice, smooth runs on them, keeping everything easy, that's what I want to do. Thursdays are typically devoted on working on any issues that need to be addressed. Say, if a horse was bad in the box or something, we'd score, maybe not even rope anything, he said. You cannot train these horses like it's a factory. It will not work. So we keep in mind that each one's different, and each one needs a little different approach. Friday, I might make one run on one horse, or I might make four on another. It just depends on the individual and what they need, he said. Like today, we got ten of them out to trot and lope and roped on another seven of them. Attention to detail is another cornerstone of Kirkenschlager's training philosophy. There are so many little details that can make a difference for a horse, he said. Sliders is an example. You might need to put a little less slider on one to help his confidence, or put a little more aggressive slider in another case where the horse needs a little help going into the ground. It always depends on what's best for each horse. Kirkenschlager says he's gained valuable pieces of knowledge from different influences to come up with his own approach. Riding with AQHA professional horsemen Robbie Schroeder and Gary Wells, Sean Darnell and NRCHA professional Brad Lund has helped his learning curve immensely. Also, Matt Armenta and Ronnie Thompson have both been a huge help with my reined work, Kirkenschlager said. Brad taught me how to show. I'd have to say Robbie and Sean really taught me how to train. Gary, he taught me all the little things. He could tell me something in one word that would be the most impactful thing, and I consider him to be one of the most underrated horse trainers out there. I'm fortunate to know all of them. Always looking for a challenge and chance to learn, Kirkenschlager has found both in the horse show world. As to what he considers the most difficult aspect of NRCHA competition for him, he says it's the rein work. Showing the reining is definitely the hardest. I mean, it's all hard, but you've got to remember the patterns and make all the markers, or you get a zero or significantly lower score, he explained. It's easy to sit there at home and tell your buddy, I could do that, that doesn't look too tough, but I promise you, it's not an easy task. You've got to present each maneuver perfectly and set things up for your run. Doing that right takes showmanship, because even if things feel a little off when you're out there, you can't let the judges know. You've got to bring some showmanship to it. Kirkenschlager's future goals are big and varied, but not beyond reach. Someday, I'd love to have a horse trained win the NRCHA World's Greatest Horseman. I'd love to win the Snaffle Bit or a Major Derby, he said. Of course, success with the roping fraternities is always my goal. I'd like to show one at the NCHA Futurity, too. I've always wanted to show at all the futurities of different disciplines. Anything to do with horses at a young age, training them, it takes a special person, and I like being around that. I'm always wanting to learn. I really enjoy the mindset of trainers. No matter the ups and downs, that mentality of helping each other and giving back, that's very cool. As for preferred pedigrees, Kirkenschlager does favor rope horse prospects that are bred to have some cow. We've had some metallic cats, dual rays. This year I've had a few gonna trashes, he said. I've got a one-time royalty that I really like. I've got two Shine Online mares that I like an awful lot. Shine Online is a 2006 Red Roan Stallion by Shining Spark and out of the Docks Oak mare, Oak's Little Diamond, herself a Snafflebit Futurity Champion with more than 10,000 in NRCHA earnings. 
Shine Online horses are very good-minded. They cinch deeper, and they're really strong. The ones I've had had no soundness issues whatsoever, Kirkenschlager said. The Shine Online horses are also very good-minded. Shine Online sired the 2014 mare hanging on the line, known as Gunny, that Kirkenschlager rode for Armenta Quarter Horses to 19000 in earnings for first in the four-year-old healing incentive and fourth in the open healing at the 2018 American Rope Horse Futurity Association World Championships in Fort Worth, Texas. Gunny is out of the Spooks Got a Gun daughter, Spooks Hang 10. When Kirkenschlager spent the latter part of 2019 sidelined with a broken leg, his cousin Trevor rode Gunny as a five-year-old in the American Rope Horse Futurity Association event to finish fourth in the open healing for 14000 Spoonful of Comfort, a horse that is by He's a Pepto Spoonful and out of a mare named Jewel Bar Ruby by Lena's Jewel Bars, owned by Marty Yates, placed 10th in the open heading and 6th in the open healing with Kirkenschlager at the 2018 American Rope Horse Futurity Association World Championships. And, after resting him his 7-year-old year, Kirkenschlager says you might see Yates heading on the horse at a few rodeos in 2020. Dakota's top three fundamentals. Number one, slow down and check for softness. The biggest deal to me is that every day you've got to slow things down and check for softness. I make sure my horses are responsive to pressure from my legs and that they're staying soft between the bridle reins. If not, it doesn't make much sense to rope until you've got that softness because you will not have long-term success unless you do. I want a horse to work from age 3 to 15, and that's why I've got to have them broken soft. You've got to maintain that every day you ride them. Fundamental number two is to go both ways. A lot of times I see people trot and lope mostly to the left. It's just something most of all of us have a tendency to do. I make a point to trot to the right and go both ways, to the point that even when I catch one and lead it out of the stall, I think about going to the right when I'm leading them. You've got to work your horse both ways for muscle memory and soundness. You hear a lot of good horsemen say, work both sides, and it's true. Number three is know your horse. I've got to know my horses enough to know when something's a little off. I'll flex their head from side to side, for example, and if I've got one not wanting to give its face one way, and he's normally a pretty supple, responsive type horse, there might be a little something cropping up. I feel like horses will kind of take care of themselves if you keep up on worming, EPM, parasites, good nutrition, all the basics. But make sure you know your horse well enough to know when something's not quite right and get it checked out. Thanks so much for giving it a listen, everyone. Just a little something different this week before we dive back into interviews, starting again next week.